Welcome to Boing Boing TV. I'm Shenny Jardin, and I'm here with John Gaeta. Hi. <laughs> and we're here talking with you about a movie that's coming out, Speed Racer. This has been in the works for some time. Did preparing for this feature um, change the way that you feel about vehicles? Like, did, do you just have this racing desire to, to go out and get in, I don't know, on, on a racetrack somewhere? Well, I'm, um, um no. <laughs> beginning of the movie we uh, debated whether we wanted to try to you know the choice was go more real you know make this sort of a modern Grand Prix you know really heavy and um, or to go completely other direction and get into a zany universe where sort of you can defy physics when you want to and I'm more into that I mean I'm I guess I'm still sort of hung up on hyper reality and what was uh, an interesting uh, other aspect about the making of this movie was that again it was like uh, essentially end-to-end -end green screen and so and it was on no. purpose I mean yeah our, our photo anime um, approach really uh, described a path where we uh, were going to sort of make this movie in components you know uh, foreground actors and then midgrounds and backgrounds and we needed to come up with them and in a way it was it did seem very much like at times making an animated movie. We were constantly in composite. We were doing a lot of 3D compositing in which we were sort of laying, laying out these layers and doing false camera moves and stuff. But the layers needed to come from someplace. And so we thought that, you know, we would create an, uh, we would just like look at the idea that, you know, the big matte painting, you know, if you had a cell animated, a cartoon and you had the big matte painting that was the background and you had these other layers in front, right? You know, you'd constantly be doing moves, you know, with your, like, old Acme Down shooter camera. And um, and so, you know, you would usually have these big map paintings and all that. So we wanted to have an analogy for that. We just thought that the real world could be fine for that, you know, because we really like the idea of, like, sampling the real world. We're into sample cinema. We went around uh, North Africa, Europe, and uh, Death Valley and these other places. Um, and we would shoot, uh, you know, uh, panoramic uh, photography of these exotic locations. But, you know, 360 degrees, a, a sphere, if you will, in all directions we would shoot with these digital stills, very high resolution, and, uh, and um, in places that you couldn't really get a film crew ever. But the idea is that what we would do is we would shoot all these scenes in front of green and we would bring these v impossible to get places back and then, uh, you know, with these spheres, which we called bubbles, right, it was our nickname, bubbles, we would like slice and dice the photography so if something seemed in front of another thing in the picture, we'd cut it out, rotoscope it out, and when re-layer it so that, you know, in an animation sense, when you moved on it, you'd have this parallax and it would look like, you know, you'd have space, like what you do when you're faking space in, in an animation. So we decided, you know, we would go around and capture these exotic locations and turn them into animation layers. And uh, but additionally, we would, um, you know, do this thing that was somewhere between, you know, matte painting and and extreme color grading, where we'd like sort of pull all the colors out and uh, enhance uh, details and paint more details to sort of tie them to the uh, Speed Racer universe. So. Um, so you'd get these, you know, so instead of just a bubble with a single, it would be like layers of an onion. So you'd have this thing that was exotically painted and you'd move, and that would be like the, the scene, you know, the, and, and when you shot your scene on the green screen stage, you'd be like composing and doing camera moves and like close-ups, whatever, and you could basically, you know, go anywhere inside this bubble and, you know, pick what angles you want and you can mix and match lenses, you could change focal lengths, you could do whatever you wanted in composite, in a 3D composite sense. Almost like spherical cells. Correct. And um, exactly, spherical cells. And, um, and so uh, 
you know, we learned a lot. Of, I mean, we've been doing it for like 12 years or whatever, so all through the Matrix trilogy and all this image-based, computer-generated backgrounds and all this virtual background stuff. Uh, but we, we changed the way that we use the same source material to now be the sort of stylistic, more simpler form that would be used on Moss to complete a movie end to end. Um, and uh, through, the, through the duration of the shoot, we met a lot of people and we had um, uh, an in-house team called the World Unit that would do all these shoots, but we also had some people we had met outside. I'm not really into roller coasters, they freak me out. I've done the zero G thing. I know what that's like. I've <laughs> barfed so many times. I've had no ability to barf any further. 